A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. I'm really a very nice priest, but I'm running quite late for the feast. It's really good food, don't mean to be rude, and I hear they don't use any yeast. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. I am a Levite, a Jew. I'm not really sure what to do. I'm afraid of attack. Maybe I'll come back. I don't want to get hurt. Would you? But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. I am a Samaritan man. I must do all that I can. This man has been hurt. Someone's taken his shirt and must come up with a plan. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Go and do likewise.
Good morning and welcome to the virtual service of the Charlotte Church. We're so glad that you chose to join to worship with us today. I'd like to start out by reading a passage of scripture to focus our hearts and our minds on today's worship. It comes from Isaiah 43 verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. God is telling you and I that he created us. He formed us. He made us. He loves us and he redeemed us and he calls us by our name. And so we belong to him. We are children of God. We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We are more than conquerors. We are God's people. So remember that as you go through the challenges of life, as you face challenges that uh, are hitting us from, from all walks of life, Remember that God is with you, God will get you through it, and that you are his. You are a citizen in the kingdom of God. We have a few announcements for today, and I'd like to go through those with you. Um, The staff just spent three days uh, praying through uh, the feedback from the power of one survey and the input that was shared by family group leaders. One thing that was shared multiple times was the desire for more opportunities to ask questions. So as a result, we will have a leaders meeting, a family group leaders meeting and leaders of all kinds uh, for the Charlotte Church on September 20th. And this will be done via Zoom from 12 to 1.30. Uh, This way, uh, we'll be able to share with you some of the things that we were working on and are focusing on as far as Uh, the church and meeting church needs and you will also have the opportunity to ask questions uh, on needs in your group and so please see announcements for the zoom meeting and passcode on September 20th also on September 20th we'll be having a family group service and this is via zoom okay so there will be no YouTube service that Sunday September 20th No YouTube service. Your service will simply be gathering together with your family group on Zoom and you will share some scriptures and have your worship together there on September 20th. Next Sunday, September 6th, will be our worship service with our brothers and sisters in Africa. So we're looking forward to that. It will also be uh, joined by uh, brothers and sisters from uh, all over the world that help support the mission work Uh, in Africa. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, September 6th, next Sunday, that will be our service and the link will be sent out next week in our announcements. And so you'll be able to click on that link and we'll worship together with everyone around the continent of Africa. But we want to um, remember to be praying for Anthony Rhodes and and Olga Kinvey. Anthony is recovering uh, from a heart attack and Olga is recovering from the COVID virus. So please keep them in your prayers. Please remember uh, to check the announcements for all of our HOPE volunteer opportunities like loaves and fishes and our school school tools drive. There you go. And make sure that you check that out and uh, see where you can serve and build up the kingdom of God through service and love. Uh, For those of you who would like to fill out 
a power of one card, uh, we're asking that uh, you would go to the charlottechurch.org and click on resources at the top of the page, then click on forms, and then click on the power of one uh, information card. And so hopefully that made sense and that was clear for you. And we would love for you to fill out a card, those of you that haven't. It's simply a card that would ask you um, three decisions. What's a spiritual, spiritual decision that you're making? And secondly, are you willing to pursue a godly one another relationship? And then three, uh, who would you like to help love and serve and give to to help to know Jesus Christ? If you could fill out that card, that would be great. At this time, let's go ahead and pray, and we will continue with our worship service. Father in heaven, almighty God, how encouraging, how strengthening, how uplifting it is to know that you know us by name, you know each and every one of us, you know our cares, our concerns, our hurts, our pains, and our struggles, and you are with us, God. We thank you, and uh, Father, that means so much to us, and we just uh, want to say, God, we love you, and uh, we lift you up for being a God who so is so powerful, and yet a God who is so loving. We ask, God, that during this time that you would continue to be with uh, Anthony Rhodes as he recovers, uh, from his heart attack. Strengthen him, Father. Bring him to a complete and full recovery. And be with Olga Kimby, God, as she also is uh, getting through the COVID virus. Uh, bring her back to total health. God bless our service and help us to just enjoy worshiping you, connecting with you, and let us, Father, give you all praise and glory. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. My name is LeVar Gladden, and this is my lovely wife, Aneta. And today we're going to talk to you a few moments about passion and growth in the scriptures and the word of God. Over this time we've been in isolation, I've been fortunate to be part of a great men's group, which has opened my eyes on who I am and where I want to be as a disciple. I admit for the past three years, I have been feeling a little bit insecure about considered being the young disciple. Um, I feel like I carry and conduct myself in a proper manner and I naturally care about people, but sometimes something just feels missing. Um, I remember being in this group for the first few weeks and feeling a bit um, insecure and uh, out of place a little bit because I only knew a handful of the brothers and I also wasn't as knowledgeable as everyone else was. Um, however, with the study in 1 Timothy, uh, a scripture that we kept referencing always stood out to me. In 1 Timothy 4, 12, it says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Um, this was important for me to hear because oftentimes we feel as if we're supposed to wake up one day and all of a sudden just have it all figured out and have all the answers. It's still a process, but during that process, people are still taking notice of who we are, how we conduct ourselves, and how we have grown as human beings and as disciples. Um, however, there's still work to be done. Um, Rodney and Ron recently asked us a question that says, what is holding us back? And to be totally honest with you, I realized that I had just not become passionate yet about studying my word and um, really diving deep into the scriptures. I checked a lot of the boxes, um, but to be honest with you, I had just not become diligent yet about opening my Bible and really spending time with the word of God. Uh, ironically, that had been on my mind for the two weeks prior to us even getting asked that question. So Anita and I had already been making steps um, to further our knowledge and information that we receive from the word every day. James 1 verse 4 says, uh, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. That's why I'm really excited that we're starting this Bible study together. Um, it's a two-year study plan, but it's um, a weekly study and we can hold each other accountable for mm -hmm. it and kind of just like give, you know, our accounts of it. Um, what I'm learning is uh, obviously uh, for those of us who know me in the group is that I'm very, very introverted, but I'm also very hard on myself, um, which makes it difficult for me to be open and to communicate with other people um, and just to overall share who I am. Um, so I'm looking forward to this study to help me dive deeper and get myself to open up so that I can share that word with God. But I'm comforted by Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9, and I'll read that to you. 
it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. It reminds me that God loves me exactly the way that I am um, and that I need to show myself the kind of grace that he has given me. Uh, this way I can love myself and show others, again, the kind of grace and love that he shows me. Yeah, church, so in other words, we feel it's very important to become passionate about the word of God simply because that's our way of showing that we're trying to actively pursue that relationship with him. And besides, he has already provided us with the blueprint of all the answers we need. Um, right now, we live in a world in a world in times where um, the world has a heavy influence. And if we're not careful, that can really affect our spirit. So we need that word of God to be able to just guide us. I um, mean, it doesn't matter if you're a young disciple or an experienced disciple. We are all gifted by being his children mm -hmm. and we are family and we're in this together. So we love you all.
mountain of the Lord It will be provided On the mountain of the Lord On the mountain of the Lord It will be provided On the mountain of the Lord On the mountain of the Lord It will be provided On the mountain of the Lord On the mountain of the Lord It will be provided On the mountain of the Lord Hi, good morning, Charlotte Church. Uh, we are the Esplanade. Uh, my name is Chris, and this is Allison. Uh, and we're just really grateful to have the opportunity to share in communion, um, to share what the cross is really doing for us, especially during these times. Um, I'm sure, as everybody knows, it's just a time of a lot of stress with uh, with COVID, with um, you know everything, with the election coming up, with uh, some of the racial uh, tensions that are going on. Um, you know, I think just it's really been weighing heavy on our hearts um, and you just become more apparent now than ever, um, you know, for us, just uh, how much the cross uh, means to us following Jesus's example um, and taking that as we, as we go through our daily lives. So I've um, had in my heart lately, Romans five, starting in verse six, it says for a while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So um, just really started thinking about Christ and just thinking about the events leading up to um, his death and just um, how he broke bread with um, Judas and, and Peter and um, when he knew that Judas was going to betray him and Peter was going to deny him. Um, he also washed their feet. Um, so he, you know, you think about it when you have a meal with someone, you are, um, it's, pretty, it's typically with a person that you care about. And um, he still cared for them. He still loved them. He still died for them. And even when I um, betray Christ, um, even as being a follower of his, he still dies for me. And it's just been one of those things I've just been thinking about with um, everything going on that, um, you know, I'm sure you've seen social media and the discussions and everything there that um, even when things are heated and things, people who disagree with whatever I believe that um, Christ died for them. I need to love them. I need to care about them, care about their salvation. So um, it's just been, um, Christ's love to me has just been becoming more apparent <laughs> and more apparent that it's needed, that it's very needed in, um, our city, our country, our world. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I just, I think about Rodney and Ron and the, the messages we've been preaching about, you know, uh, not just being another church on the corner. Um, and I think, you know, just, just looking at Christ's example, I think, um, you know, being able to show the world and being able to show everyone out there that, you know, despite our differences, despite everything that's going on, we have one thing that unifies us. Uh -huh. You know, and we, we have the answer. Uh, you know, okay. if we're willing to get out of our own ways, um, we know that Jesus is the answer and he's the way through. Um, I wanted to share uh, just a scripture that encourages me in John 16, verses 33. It says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And I think, you know, I've read this scripture, uh, you know, so many times and I've known it for years, but I think just uh, looking at this and reexamining, um, you know, where my walk with Christ has been, just looking at that scripture, it's like, you know, we know the answer. The battle has been won. Uh, and just realizing uh, just how encouraging that is, um, knowing that he, he's already done the work for us. Um, you know, I, I don't think it necessarily makes this situation easier, but I think it just gives me uh, personally just that hope, um, you know, knowing that, you know, Christ has won victory for us. And I think that if we can remember that as we go throughout our lives, uh, as we go through 
um, you know, this crazy situation, I think it just gives us that hope, um, you know, that there and and the hope that there really is peace out there. So as we take the uh, the bread and the juice, um, you know, I just pray that we'll remember uh, that Christ is he's won. He's declared victory for us. Um, and that if we will remember that, uh, you know, we can really uh, make a difference in this world and, and really be that shining light. Um, so with that, we can go to God with prayer. Um, and thanks again for letting us share. Uh, dear God, thank you uh, just so much for this opportunity. Uh, you know, I I think just with the, the situations that are going on, um, it's just really easy to get caught up in um, the difficulties um, and just how draining, uh, you know, it seems that life can be. But we know that you've put us here for a reason. Um, we appreciate the sacrifice that you've made uh, just to allow us to have a chance at life. Um, pray that as we go through our week, we can just really remember, um, you know, as we talk with people that are different than us, that believe different things, that we can really um, allow your light to shine through and uh, and help others to know Christ. Um, please help us just as, as we go through, um, you know, our lives that we are being that beacon of light. Um, thank you so much uh, just for your son, for the sacrifice. Um, you know, thank you for this opportunity that we're able to still meet. Uh, and I pray that, you know, as we go in, you know, through the rest of this year and into next year, whatever happens, that we remember the sacrifice that you made and that no matter what, nothing's going to separate us from you. And it's in your son's name I pray. Amen. No strength to fight 
no tears to cry even if I try but still my soul refuses to die mm -mm. one touch will change my life take me to the king I don't have much to bring my heart is torn in pieces is my offering lay me at the throne leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and sing to you the song please take To stop playing these games We need no work For the people's pain So Lord speak right now Let it fall like rain oh, yeah. We're desperate We're chasing out Good morning, Charlotte Church, and welcome to all of you who are visiting with us this morning. Again, we're so happy and grateful that you've decided to spend your time with us today, and we hope that in the time that we have together that at least one thing will resonate with you and help you along in your journey uh, in building your relationship with God. Um, I want to uh, just bring something to your attention here, if you notice. Uh, today, I'm sporting a t-shirt that says, To Restore Hope. Last week, I was wearing a t-shirt that said, The Power of One. And, of course, I showcased a couple of the Power of One cups also, so hopefully you noticed. Um, and you noticed I wouldn't even look at the camera when I was doing it, so hopefully that made you laugh too. But uh, this t-shirt actually comes from Community Matters Cafe, and it's a cafe that Ron, Yuchin, and I... Uh, go to pretty often uh, when we can and we'll have meetings there and things like that and um, I probably should buy some stock in the place I don't even know if it's 
publicly traded, but love going there. They have great food, uh, great uh, coffee drinks as well. And that uh, cafe actually employs men and women from the rescue mission and Dove's Nest and helps them to get back into the workforce, uh, back into society. And so along with the work that the Dove's Nest and the rescue mission uh, does uh, in their facilities, along with Community Matters Cafe, helps get them back on track and off to building a career and rebuilding their life. So if you ever have opportunity, uh, please get out there. Again, it's called Community Matters Cafe. This is a free plug. They had no idea I was doing it, but just, you know, wanted to do it for them. But anyway, I wanted to start this morning and there's a term circling the wagons and in the days of early the early western settlers they would travel by what they called wagon trains and whenever they were under attack they would circle those wagons um, giving them the ability to uh, make a perimeter that would defend them against their attackers and so they put their rifles in between the wagons again fending off their attackers, and they would call that circling the wagons. Today, uh, in our modern civilized uh, society, that term has come to mean uh, bringing together a team or people and to discuss, to agree, uh, and develop uh, an approach that uh, would fend off possible or impending attack from those outside. And I want us to do that today as the Charlotte Church. I want us to circle our wagons, so to speak. And I think it's very important because we, we are always, as disciples, under attack by Satan uh, and his forces. Uh, the world is always under attack, but many live their lives totally oblivious and not thinking um, that what's happening in the world today is a direct assault from Satan. And uh, because the Bible tells us that he knows his time is short. And so he's trying to take as many as possible. And of course, as we look at what's happening in the world today, we are converging on one another. And we have people uh, in the world from different ethnicities, different experiences, different strengths, different weaknesses, different fears, um, and, and all those things. And we converge on one another and the world has and is showing us how it handles it. But as kingdom citizens, as children of an incredibly loving God, the creator of all, we have an incredible opportunity to show the world the righteous way to respond in all situations. And so even in the kingdom, we converge on one another, but we have a way to do so in Christ, where there's love abounding, where there's patience abounding. And in my role, in Ron's role as evangelists, as elders, as their role, it's pretty difficult because we have people disciples as part of our family that are from all over. And because of that, you have those that feel like, hey, you're not doing enough or saying enough or you're being silent with what's happening in the world today or you're saying too much. You're 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 bringing things up too much. And and, you know, we here's what I want to ask. That you extend grace to us and to yourselves and to the rest of your brothers and sisters. Let's extend one another grace because this journey that we're on is difficult. But praise God for his word. Praise God for his spirit. Praise God for Jesus. And praise God that he does not treat us as our sins deserve. And so let's circle the wagons. Let's begin taking some inventory of, yes, what's happening in the world, what's happening in our nation, and what's happening to us individually and what's happening to us as a church. But I want to start by reminding us of who we are in Christ and because of Christ. So turn your Bibles with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. 
First Peter chapter one, we're going to read verses one and two. And as we begin here, I want you to really pay attention, dig into the words from from here to the, the rest of the time we're going to spend today. Dig into the words. Peter, in verse one, an apostle of Jesus Christ to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. So here Peter is sending this letter out and he's speaking to these churches in these five different areas. And look at the map that you, should be up on your screen here. And when Peter wrote this, the, it looked like this, the, what were, the cities were called at that time. And so you see where Galatia and Cappadocia are and Asia and Bithynia and, and Pontus. You see where they are. Now look at what it looks like today. So that land area is actually now modern day Turkey. And you see where the those proximately where those cities are. And of course, to the far north there of that country, you have the Black Sea. Now, here's something that I thought was pretty funny, has nothing to do with the message that I'm talking about today. But to the far east, uh, before the red line there, uh, the border, rather, you, you might see a city called Batman. <laughs> so there's a Batman in Turkey. So maybe it's just not a comic book. Maybe there really is a Batman. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but I just thought that was funny. Anyway, getting back here to First uh, Peter. So Peter uses a word that, depending on what your translation is, mine says exiles. Your translation may say aliens. So here in the, the verses one and two, when he uses the word exiles as baptized disciples, we are now exiles living in this world. When we again became baptized disciples, we stopped being citizens of the world or citizens of America or citizens of the continent of Africa, say of Kenya or or, um, or say Nairobi, Kenya, or any other place where you happen to be. We're no longer citizens of this world or this country. We're citizens of the kingdom of God. And this is, this is real. And we're waiting for our return to go back home. We, we can't go back yet. God in his mercy and his patience uh, is wanting as many as possible to be saved. But we're exiles in this world. Well, we're also, as baptized disciples, aliens who are no longer naturalized to the ways of this world. In other words, we don't operate, think, act the way that the world does. We don't respond the way that citizens of this world does. As a matter of fact, the way that we respond is supposed to come uh, from heaven. It's supposed to come from righteousness, that it is so starkly different that it brings it it sheds light if you will to Jesus that's how our life is supposed to be as a matter of fact think back at the plagues and the plagues the the plague of darkness as a matter of fact the bible describes it in genesis as a dreadful darkness a dreadful darkness in egypt but there was light in Goshen. So you think about how different that was. Darkness in one place and light in another, in a neighboring little city, in a neighboring little town. That is how our light is supposed to shine amongst this, uh, this generation, this dark world that we're living in. So that's who he's talking to, right? Aliens, exiles and aliens. But now let's look at chapter two.
So in chapter 2, we're going to look in verse 9. Peter, again, speaking to those five areas, those five provinces or little towns. He says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. And I'm reading here out of the English Standard Version. But he says here to those disciples spread out that you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. This is who we are. And because of who we are, how should we live? How ought we to live? But this is who we are. This right here could be a great Bible study for you. It's something that will give you some meat and dig down into. I'd love to do it right now, but that's not our focus. But this is who we are in Christ and because of Christ. I want to share with you a conversation um, that I had not too long ago with a sister. Well-respected, well-loved uh, sister, uh, great servant, great heart. And she was sharing with me, uh, going over the last few uh, messages that we've had on Sunday, and uh, she was, you know, very uh, open and and um, and humble. But you know, she said, you know, I am kind of don't look forward uh, a number of times tuning into the services because they're so intense. They're so heavy. She said, I really want to be encouraged. Um, and, and I listened and I said, you know what? I, I get that. I really do. And uh, I, I've even said it on uh, one of the lessons that I gave that I know this is, uh, you know, pretty heavy. And so as we began to talk, I, I share with her that we all have different roles in the family of God. And as I shared just a few moments ago, the roles of evangelists and elders and many of our roles as elders and evangelists do overlap. Uh, but then we have some specific differences in those roles so that the church can grow and move forward and mature in those things. As evangelists, it is our job to advance the kingdom of God, to move it forward. Uh, to preach and to teach the word, uh, making sure that the gospel is expanding or gospel expansion. So here in the Charlotte region, we have uh, uh, communities all over the region. And we even include parts of South Carolina as parts of our Charlotte, North Carolina region. And so we have these, these different towns and cities that are part of it. And so as evangelists, again, we need to make sure that the gospel is, expand, is, is being expanded out through these different areas. Also, uh, we're responsible for the growth of the church, both spiritually and numerically. And again, uh, especially spiritually is where there's overlap, uh, that particular area with elders, elders and evangelists. And because we have different roles, no one role should be looked at to fulfill everything. And I said to this sister, I said, you are known to be incredibly encouraging 
uplifting, positive. But here's how we work together really as a family. I said, so it is up to Ron and I as evangelists to, as ministers of full-time, ministers of the gospel, as we study the word, as we are uh, encountering the spirit, as we are uh, striving to be close closer and closer to God, we are to bring to God's people uh, where we are, where we need to go. Thus saith the Lord, if you will. And from where, what does the scripture teach us and how do we get there? Uh, how do we respond to this world in light of everything that's happening? Um, what is our state right now? What is our status? What, where are we spiritually? How are we doing spiritually? To call that out, to mature us and to help us move forward. The elders help also to mature the church, to strengthen uh, uh, primarily by shepherding, but teaching, uh, by listening and, and, and a host of other things. But we work together to uplift and move the church together. Now, as disciples who work secularly, I said, sister, while we're doing our role, here's what you can do. You need more encouragement. There's a host of you right now that are listening that are great at encouraging one another, that are great at listening, great at hospitality, uh, with all the different things that you do to encourage one another. I said, so while we're fulfilling our role, it's up to you to do those other parts. Yes, as evangelists, we also need to encourage the church. Absolutely, without question. Um, but right now we're in a state that I really believe we need to talk about some things for as long as it takes so that we can be right with God. And if you think about it in Ephesians uh, chapter four, in Ephesians chapter four, look in verse 15. It says, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. That's how we grow together. As each part does its work, as each part is working properly, as each part is joined together by every ligament, supporting ligament. That's how we work together. So that we fulfill these different roles and it's not so compartmentalized that we have to stop, do this, stop, do something else. We can move in concert with one another. And that is how we grow. Give that some more thought. And I really do believe that God's spirit will give you more insight into that. We started the year in January um, with a theme the power of one. And our theme passage was, uh, is actually in John chapter 12 and uh, verse 24 when we turn there. And what I want to do now is make a connection. But we'll get to that connection. So we started the year again in, um, in January with the power of one theme. And the theme verse again is in John 12 and verse 24. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain or kernel of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains alone or single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit or well, your translation say, but if it dies, it becomes many seeds. It multiplies. OK, so it's a concept here really of dying to ourself to produce many other seeds. It's it's this phenomena of the death and production of a single seed. And so the power of one. So as we die to ourselves, God's spirit can work 
in us, through us, on us, and produce a crop a hundred, fifty, sixty times, sixty, fifty, sixty, a hundred times, right? And so we actually produce something, but we have to die to ourselves first to produce those many seeds or to multiply. And so as we started the power of one thing, we sent out cards and we asked three key things to the disciples. And approximately 268 of you uh, turned in those cards so that we could pray uh, for you and pray for the decisions um, that you're making. And uh, moving forward, we encourage more of you to join us. And I'm sure Ron uh, asked earlier and actually gave you some direction that if you are interested in filling out one of those cards and getting it back to us so that we can pray for you also, uh, please do that. The three areas were that uh, we asked the, the disciples to make one spiritual decision. Number two, it was asking, are you willing to pursue a one another relationship. And thirdly, we ask, who is it that you would like to help come to know Christ in this year? So those three areas. Again, number one, uh, uh, making one spiritual decision, just, just one. And there are all types of decisions that uh, those 268 disciples uh, are making. But the mass majority centered around intimacy with God, number one. And number two, having a deeper and consistent Bible study. That's what it's centered around. Number two, in terms of willingness to have one another relationship, we're going to be doing a lot more teaching uh, on that uh, as, as time goes on. But basically, that's living life together. Having a one another relationship is living life together. And then thirdly, who will you be helping to come to know Christ uh, in this year? And we have over 300 names, and it's a mix of, of family, neighbors, co-workers, and the like. And that's exciting. And so we started the year, but then in March, we were exposed by some converging storms. Some things hit in March. Of course, that was the COVID-19 virus, the onslaught of racial, social, and political uh, unrest uh, that we're still in now, the barrage of media reports from all types of, of stations and broadcasts, uh, death has come, civil unrest across the globe, and because of COVID-19 and, and, and our stay-at-home order and things like that, uh, we started this, this Zoom phenomenon, right? Or uh, in some cases, uh, Google Hangouts or uh, Microsoft Teams, whatever uh, platform you use. But now there's fatigue in all of that. There's social alienation. People are lonely. There's stress now because of work, children all at the same time. Loneliness has set in with a number of disciples because you're living alone and you're needing to stay at home or really close to it to protect yourself. There's social media wars, challenges in our faith and, and the like. And so we need to be asking ourselves this question with all these things converging and happening at the same time. What does the word of God say? And there's so much other fallout. So we've we've been exposed with these storms coming. We've been exposed in two areas. Number one, our discipleship. And number two, our submission to the word of God, our discipleship and our submission to the word of God. In Luke chapter 9, 57 through 62, and Luke 14, verses 25 through 33, we see that our allegiance must be to Jesus Christ alone. And it's so radical because it's total and complete. But that's what we're called to. In terms of our submission to the word of God, God's word, number one, it lifts us up. It humbles us. The word challenges us. The word strengthens us. And remember, Jesus said three times when we was being tempted in the desert that it is 
written. And also concerning the word, Jesus said in John 14, verse 15, verse 21, and verse 23, If you love me, you will obey my commands. If you love me, you will do what I say. This is what Jesus says. Obedience and love go hand in hand. That's what happens. And, and so that's where we've been exposed. And what, what do I mean we've been exposed? What I mean is that because all of these different challenges have converged and put stress on us and pressure emotionally, spiritually, we start seeing what we're made of. We start seeing how we're going to respond or how we're going to react. And of course, in the world, we've seen all types of things that have happened, but we've also seen it in the world. And so there was a shift. So again, we started the year off the power of one. And so in, in uh, March, April or so, there was a shift, not a total change in the theme, but a shift in the theme. A shift is you have the same subject matter, but it's slightly altered. A change is that the subject matter has become new and totally different. So we just made a shift because of the things that I had seen coming out of disciples, things that were posting, things that disciples uh, were saying, how disciples were feeling. Uh, and these things are real, but what I'm calling us to is a, a, an intense focus on obeying what the Word of God says. And so we started uh, or began the shift of building a city on a hill. And the passage there is in Matthew chapter 5. Won't you turn there? In Matthew chapter 5. And we'll look here in verse 14. Jesus uh, had, has been speaking for some time here and he gets to this portion and he says to the disciples, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And so, again, we made a shift to building a city on a hill. And as he's talking to his disciples, he's giving them a vision of a city on a hill and what it's supposed to be like. Then he talks about this light. Right. That a city on a hill cannot be hidden. And he talks about when there is light. You know, there's light. And again, the whole Goshen and Egypt uh, situation there in Genesis. And so I began talking about citizenship, quality of our discipleship, kingdom identity, Jesus culture, shining the light of Christ the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And remember, um, the, the, the decisions, the spiritual decisions that were made on those cars that were turned in, uh, the mass majority, again, were about intimacy with God and uh, a deep desire uh, for more Bible study and allowing the Word to transform our life. And so all the things that we have been looking at have been going towards those, those goals, those desires rather. And I wanted uh, this shift to take us towards a keener focus on that one spiritual decision that we all made. And what I wanted to do was to give those decisions context, wanted to uh, give them meaning and depth that if you want it to grow in your walk with God, uh, this is what it would look like. These are some areas you need to look at and they will take you deeper. Um, I wanted to shine a light on what the covenant relationship with God really is. That's what I wanted to do. So this is 
this sheet here is, uh, or these several sheets are kind of a spreadsheet of some of the decisions. Some of the decisions were to trust God with love and faithfulness in 2020. Uh, one said to continue to dig deeper in my relationship with God, to be more consistent and diligent in my Bible study, um, sharing God's word with someone every day, seeking God's will and righteousness through prayer and the Bible. So, so many, you know, different things want to to uh, be protective, fiercely protective of my personal time with God in order to be ready to go. Um, be more consistent and intentional with my relationship with God. Grow in the depth of my prayer. Study my Bible purposefully on a daily basis. So and, and they, they read so much like that. And so, again, I wanted to give it context, meaning and depth and shine a light on what the covenant relationship with God really is. That's what I wanted to do. So there is no division in the power of one and building a city on a hill. There's actually a connection. There is a relationship between them, because if you want to that one spiritual decision that you're going to make, dig deep. And if you're thinking, OK, hey, how what 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 can I do if I want to build a relationship with God? Well, what is your citizenship really like in the kingdom? Now, how are you as a kingdom citizen or how different are you than you were before you became a Christian in your thinking? in your actions, in the words that you speak, and how you treat other people? What about your, the covenant relationship with, with God? How are you looking at that? And as you read the word, are you compelled to actually obey it when you're like, oh, that's not how I feel? Are you compelled to put it into practice when you see what's happening in the world today? Right. Because, again, when we become baptized disciples, our citizenship now is different. It's not just different. I mean, it's otherworldly. Right. It's it's in a whole nother place. It's in a kingdom that is not of this world. Remember that we are called out as the church. We are called out now in First Peter uh, chapter two, as we read. Uh, there's a Greek word when it says that we're called, that he called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. So you've got the Greek words for out and called. Uh, when they are put together, they form a word called ecclesia, which simply means called out. And that is what we are. And it refers to an assembly or gathering of people that has been called together. And that's what we are. So when that that word, uh, you know, again, it's, it refers to an assembly. So instead of the English word being translated assembly, it's generally translated church. And so as God's church, we are called out of the world. Have you answered the call? If you're listening today, have you answered the call or are you continuing to answer the call of being called out? out of the world, out of darkness, into the light. Because where the light is, that's where joy is. Because that's where Jesus is. That's where arguments cease. Because that's where Jesus is. And whenever two disciples, let's say they're on opposite sides, and we're going to talk more about this at a later time, but you have two disciples or two people that are polar opposites. And generally, those uh thoughts and convictions uh, would cause division and, and there's arguing. If that is happening with people, or let's say again, two disciples, and they both feel like they're being righteous, but they're still separated, disagree with one another, uh, and there's enmity or division between them, both are wrong. Because if we're coming towards Jesus, you begin to put down your arms. I think probably one of arguably the strongest statement that was made when we had our first group discussion with seven disciples was from our brother Ezekiel. And he talked about when 
he comes into a situation where he has some deep feelings that are different than his brothers, than a brother. And he'll come to this with his, you know, ready to fight. And he said, I don't want to come into a discussion with my dukes up, if you will. He said, but the only way I can do it is if I start with the end in mind. And the end is that I want my brother's heart. And if I'm going for my brother's heart, I'm not going in fighting. And when he said that, and when I listened to it a second time, I thought that was the spirit speaking through him. And I was so encouraged by that, but so moved. That is what we are. The end in mind is that we should want our brother and sister's heart. And that knocks down fighting if our hearts are in the right place. And so as I see the world, um, as I see what's happening even in the church, there, there are many who call themselves Christians that are spending time going into the world versus coming out of it. And I'm talking about by the way we speak, by the way we think, by the things, you know, that just how we act many times. We're supposed to be coming out of the world. And it's a stark difference. In the Rise Up group that Ron and I are leading, we are beginning to read a book that many of you have read called Will the Real Heretics Please Stand Up? And we started uh, in verse, excuse me, in chapter 13. And that chapter is entitled, What Happened to the Early Church? And we're searching for similarities to what happened then to what's happening right now. And in that group, we're really working to, as the song says, rise up, O men of God, to uh, be done with lesser things and give our hearts and our minds and our soul and our strength to serve the King of Kings. And we're working to lift high the cross of Christ and tread where his feet have trod. And as brothers of the Son of Man, we want to rise up for him, through him, because of him, to serve, to impact uh, the rest of uh, our brothers and sisters in this church and for so, so many. And again, the power of one building this city on a hill, if there was not a great need for it, even in, in, in the world, why would Martin Luther, who was an obscure German professor of theology, launch an attack on the Roman Catholic Church and nail his 95 theses on the door of Wittenberg's Castle Church in October of 1517. Why? Because there was a need to be called out. Why was there a need for even having a Reformation movement? Because we needed to be called out. Why would Joshua say to Israel in Joshua 24 and verse 14, he says, Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. He was calling them out. Stop doing what you're doing and start serving and following the Lord. Peter again reminds us in 1 Peter 2, says we have been called out. He's called us out of darkness into his wonderful light that we may declare his praises. So the power of one in those three decisions, one spiritual decision willing to pursue a one another relationship, living life together. And who will I help come to know Christ this year? And as we build this city on a hill, it goes deeper into that one spiritual decision. Intimacy with God, deeper Bible study, obeying the word of God. And so there is a marriage between the two. The next message that uh, we will have in this series of, of um, circling the wagons, taking inventory. The title is going to be about dual citizenship and the effects of that and what it is and, um, and, and that outlook. Again, dual citizenship. And next week uh, on September 6th, just as a reminder, 
Uh, we're going to be having an, a service where we'll be worshiping with our brothers and sisters throughout Africa. That, uh, I believe, will prove to be a very uplifting and encouraging time. On uh, the 13th, Ron will be preaching and we'll have actually a number of our brothers and sisters in the youth and family uh, ministry as far as the, the team um, will be coming to us sharing some things as well, uh, a, a, a plea. And so I look forward to that. Uh, and on September the 20th, as Ron shared already, will be House Church Sunday. So we will not have a video or YouTube recording um, that on September the 20th, that Sunday. And then on Sunday, uh, September 27th, again, our brother Mike Burns will have a message for us also. So thank you again for joining us today. May God keep you. May he bless you. And may God strengthen you as we strive together to raise up that banner of Christ and to glorify God's name. Amen.